Tea time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Karate Tea Time. This week has been an, um, an interesting week really. I've been incredibly busy in work and I've had to do a lot of travelling which has been a bit bizarre. Um, which, you know, it's, um, it, it's taken me by surprise and, and actually having to travel has been um, rather exhausting. So it's, uh, it, as you've noticed, there's been no videos this week. Um, it's not that I haven't actually recorded anything. I did record um, either two or three uh, videos ready, but um, I haven't had a chance to do the editing on them because when I've had the time, frankly, I haven't had the uh, the inclination or the motivation to do it. Um, but it has still been a good week. I say a busy but tiring week. Um, I did have something which was really nice. I received a gift from two of my students as a thank you for trying to keep the club going in, in virtual form. Uh, and it's this book here, Parting the Clouds, uh, by Grenville Harrop. And it's the science of martial arts. So it's a fighter's guide to the physics of kicking and punching. And I mean, I've only had a, a cursory flick through it so far, but it's, it looks really, really good. It's definitely up my street. And once I um, finally sit down and spend some time on that um, biomechanics um, uh, camera, uh, that's going to be absolutely invaluable. I can I, I can already see that's going to help me actually understand what I'm seeing on that camera. So that's been um, that's been a fantastic thing to receive and really enjoying it. And so today's subject matter um, is goal setting, and um, what we're looking at is uh, for those that are interested, it, it's called uh, Locke's theory of uh, goal setting. And uh, it was actually, a, it was, uh, it started off with a professor called Dr. Locke and then um, eventually another um, gentleman by the name of Dr. Latham joined. And so you ended up with um, some joint publications, Locke and Latham's theories of goal setting. And it's, it's just, um, the reason I bring this up is because we're, we're now into the ninth week of our lockdown. And it's, um, you know, like, I, I'm... I'm struggling as well, you know, with motivation on certain days, you know, you're, you're stuck inside your four walls, which I don't normally mind too much, but I am missing the interaction of the club and, and you know, family and so on. Um, so the reason I bring this up, though, is, is the um, importance of goal setting. Now, goal setting is something that should be happening beyond your, uh, you know, just the sake of the lockdown, but it's actually something that can be really useful right now um, to help you know, keep people going and motivate them. And I'm doing it for myself. And the first thing I want to, I, I'll, I'll tell you what my goals are shortly, um, but just to give you a bit of a background on the theory, excuse me, they, um, they, they identified five principles to improve the chances of success, of success when goal setting. And these are clarity, challenge, commitment, feedback, and the task complexity. Um, Essentially, what we're looking at is we, we have to be able to set clear goals that, we're, that we want to aim for. And when you're doing this, you need to think about a number of things. So, excuse me, looking down, I've just made some notes. Um, but you need to determine not only the... the when, you, when you determine what the goal is, your personal goal, you need to think about how you're going to measure that success. Because it's all well and good having a, a goal, but if you don't have a way of actually measuring whether you've achieved it or not you're you will lose motivation very very quickly the other thing is then to, on the motivation front is you need to set a goal that is uh, challenging um, enough to maintain your interest if it's if it's a relatively mundane um, goal the likelihood is is that you will pursue it for a short period of time and then it's going to drop off very very quickly and as soon as that happens um, you <laughs> You've failed the goal, but you won't actually care. Um, and that's very, very important when it comes to goal setting. You, ha you have to invest something into it and want to achieve it. So that's, that's a very, very important point. Um, 
if you're working with team, if it's a team goal, so more people, there's uh, th there's a bit more to, to deal with when you're looking at team goals as well. So you, you need to think about commitment from different people. Now, if you're obviously, you know, like all of us stuck inside and you've maybe got a friend or a family member that's in the house can do things with you, it's making sure that they're going to be committed because typically what will happen is, say for argument's sake, like one of the things I'm going to be working on is my flexibility. If I agree to do it with someone else, what often happens is if that other person or I on one day say, oh, I don't feel like doing that today, um, what will happen is it'll have the knock-on effect of the other person who will give in and say, okay, well, we'll do it another day. And then that will keep happening. It's much harder for that person to say, no, come on, pull your socks up and sort yourself out and do it. So it's, um, it's getting a, a mutual goal if you're going to do it like that. But also, of course, you can do it virtually. Uh, we, we set a 30-day um, a flexibility challenge and um, you know, we, we probably haven't fed back enough as, as a group to see how people are doing. Um, and I have a feeling that, like us, it started to started off with good habits and it's disappeared slightly. Um, and that's where feedback comes in. That's another important point is, is there needs to be some sort of feedback. Now, if you've got personal goals, that might be a bit of self-reflection. Um, a lot of people like to write down notes or just you know almost do like a diary form you could do a little video thing or it could be something as simple as uh, like say if you're trying to improve um, your flexibility do a do a photo each week of from one pose that you're doing and see if it's improved um, yeah so so that is that is essentially it so that's Locke and Latham's um, really really rough rough outline of, of the theory of goal setting uh, the reason I bring this up is because I am making the most of it myself. I am going to be setting myself some goals to um, continue after lockdown as well. So I've got a couple of things I want to do. So the first one is, is I want to have, I want to improve my flexibility. Um, to do this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to, uh, Kirsty is studying her personal training qualifications at the minute, so she's really well ahead of me on on exercises and um, things I can do. So I'm going to be relying on Kirsty's help, but I'm going to put together a, um, a 10 to 15 minute flexibility routine that I can do daily, uh, hopefully sort of first thing in the morning or when we're back to work, I can do it when I get to work at my desk because there's nothing worse than being stuck in a sitting position because you don't realise how long you're there for. And um, if I can just do 10 to 15 minutes every day, um, I should hopefully start to see some improvements and um, in terms of the feedback on that the reality is my feedback will be simple I'll feel the difference when I come to training I will feel more flexible um, and I should be able to of course get further with my you know whatever part of my body I'm working on it should be able to go further it should be able, it should be easier or more relaxed to do so that's my that's one of my goals um, the other goal that I can do while I'm on the lockdown at the moment is I'm going to be working on the weaker side of my body. Um, the, we all have a dominant and um, a more passive side of our body uh, because of being naturally right or left handed. So in my case I am uh, right hand dominant so my right side is typically much better at almost everything I do in karate than my left side of my body. And the result is, is that, you know, it's noticeable when I do certain techniques. Yokigiri Kiyagi is probably my worst kick on my left side. It doesn't feel as comfortable. It's, uh, I, I've identified the fault, but it, it's going to take a lot of repetition, a lot of practice to remove that. So my goal at the moment is, um, and I've been sticking to this quite well, at 10 o 11 o'clock every day, I'm getting myself outside to get some fresh air as long as it's not throwing it down. And I'm going to be working on the left side of my body at a three to one ratio compared to my right. And uh, I discussed this with my class on one of the virtual lessons. It's always important to, to still work the dominant side of the body. If you imagine that uh, you know this is my dominant side skill level and this is my weaker side skill level. If my dominant side is here, what I want to be doing is not it's not stopping this one and trying to bring this up to here. What I should be doing is I should be doing this one at a slower rate than this one so that they're all both improving until eventually they level off. 
it takes longer, but it's it's important because you need a reference point to understand what is feeling better. Um, and so this is, comes back to the feedback element of, of this, of goal setting. So if I work a three to one ratio, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my weak side of my body for say, let's say for argument's sake, I'm doing that like Gary Kiyaki, I might do um, five to 10 reps on my left side, which will probably, and I'll try to make a small improvement to it. Um, what I'll do then is I will work um, one set on the right side of my body as a reference point to go, okay, something feels completely different on this side and it's far better so therefore I'm going to adjust my left side on my next set and I will then do another five to ten reps on my left side of my body again trying to make those improvements to make it feel more like the right side more natural and um, because I'm going to do a three to one ratio what I'll do is I'll essentially have two sets of the first set on the left side of the body will be um, just getting a feel for how I am a little bit of a warm-up as well um, when I come to the second set on that side of the body, this will be a more fluid practice. Uh, so I'll be looking at just trying to get a nice movement with any kick or strike or whatever it is I'm doing. And then when I get the third set on that side of the body, there'll be a brief, because there'll be a brief pause there, little, little maybe stretch off. And then I'm going to try 10, five to 10 performance kicks or whatever the technique will be. And that will be my way of gauging it. And I'm going to try and level off that weaker side of my body to my right side uh, you know for as long as it takes and then once I get there if it gets there I can then start a one-to-one -one or two-to-one ratio you know and that's the way it will work and the final um, goal that I have set from a, a karate point of view is something that I had planned to do before the lockdown happened um, and it just kind of interrupted it and that is, is I am going to try and set uh, once a month or once every couple of months. I'm going to try and find um, some time, you know, uh, on a, a weekend or whatever it is, to travel around the UK uh, to train with a different instructor. There's there is there's so much talent in the UK, um, and there's a lot of these legendary instructors around by you know by their reputation, um, and without wishing to sound horrible some of them are starting to die off now um the thing that brought this into sort of sharp contrast for me was when sensei bob Poynton died and he's someone i'd always heard a lot about and i'd seen a lot and people i have a lot of uh respect for in their training they i know they look up to these people and they know they hold i know they hold them in high regard and it saddens me that I, I've missed the opportunity to train with him. And I don't want that to happen with other people. So I want to, once the lockdown is finished, I'm going to essentially pick an instructor um, and find time to go to train with people like Sensei Terry O'Neill, um, Frank Brennan, Aidan Trimble. Um, these are people that I would love to train with. And I... I don't want it to be one of those regrets in the future where I go, I wish I had trained with these people. Even if I only do it once, that's that's all that matters. And I'm going to just make the effort, make the time. And that will be my goal. Um, there's also people um, that I've met, um, are just you know other club instructors um, who I have got on very well with and yet I've never had the chance to train with them. And I'm going to make the effort to try and visit them as well. And uh, that that is my long term goal is to try and keep my own development going by going elsewhere. But this also doesn't exclude people locally in my own organisation. I don't have to travel around the UK. There are so many people, South Wales, where I am now. Uh, you know, I need to make the effort to go and train with my own chief instructor. Paul Watson, I need to go and see him. And just even if I just go once a month just for my own my own development and my own sanity you know we've got people in some of our other clubs you know we've, we've got Gareth Rowe we've got Matthew Lloyd we've got John I mean there's there's just some of these names may not mean anything to some of the people listening but they they are superb people and I'm not missing anyone it's just too many to list um and and that is my long-term goal you know at least once a month I'm going to make sure I go to, to train with some of these people 
and uh, enjoy my own my own training you know get away from that teaching environment and yeah that's it I, I, I highly encourage everyone to look at uh, setting their own goals for this and make sure that they are achievable challenging and measurable uh, otherwise you're just going to lose motivation but it's a really really important thing to do all the time um, set the goals in your in training you can have a long-term goal and you can have a goal on the moment you know i mean um just a quick example before i sign off is that you know sometimes people say ah, you know i'm struggling to do my my gakazukis i can't get them uh, or i can't get them on target very well a lot of instructors will say to that student well just try harder just keep doing it and that doesn't actually generate much motivation but if you just you can set a very small goal for somebody you can say to them okay i want you to try and hit 80 percent of them um or you know if you know just say right okay i want you to do 10 punches on this pad as fast as you can and you want to try and hit that center point eight out of ten times and and by just assigning that tiny detail it gives them something to aim for and as soon as, soon as they hit eight out of ten they will be happy uh you know whatever it is and um and people will remember the way they felt more than what you said um and it's a very very important skill to uh, to have to aid people and also to do yourself and that's it um that's all for today and um set some goals and i hope you achieve them and um well, I'll update you on mine, um, hopefully in maybe a month or two. We'll see, what, see how I'm getting on with it. And other than that, enjoy your bank holiday weekend. I uh, hope you don't go too far afield. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time, guys. Thank you very much. Cheerio.